and welcome to the Armour 2 Operation Arrowhead Editor Tutorial, Part 2. Be advised, enemy patrols in close proximity. Hold oh, copy. Understood. Thanks for the update. take the prototype mission that we created in part 1, deploy some more advanced editing techniques, and take this mission to Alpha. If you've missed part 1, we strongly suggest you check it out, where we created the prototype mission and took a look at all of the basic tools at your disposal. But now, let's move on to take a look at randomization, the functions manager and config viewer, and achieve some basic SQF scripting. To start, Let's complicate our Blue 4 patrol by inserting an improvised explosive device. To do this, use the Units tool and click on the map where you'd like to place it. Choose Objects as the class type and select any item from the unit list. In the Name field, enter a value. I'll choose IED. To make the mission more dynamic, let's randomize the object's position. To achieve this, we'll need to add some markers and select the empty type, which ensures that they're not visible to the player. Using the Groups tool, click from the marker to the IED object. This means that the object will appear at any of these three positions. So far, we've only modified the mission within the game's editor interface. However, to deploy more advanced techniques, we need to find the directory where the mission is located. By default, this directory is found in My Documents slash armor2 slash mission. So, opening it up, we should see the mission.sqm, which is the mission output from the in-game editor. Now, we need to create a new file, which will hold our script. To get started, let's open our favorite text editor, or just notepad by default. Save the file as, for example, ied.sqf in the mission directory. To execute the script, we're gonna use a trigger already placed in-game. In the On Activation field, we need to point the virtual machine to the SQF file that we've just created by using an exec vm command. The name of the script should be identical to the SQF file that we just created a moment ago. So, now we've pointed the mission to the script file, we need to put some functions in it. But before we do that, let's take a look at some of the functions already at your disposal. To do this, it's necessary to show you a couple of interfaces, specifically the Functions Manager and Config Viewer. The Config Viewer lets you see all of the game's configuration files, for example, a list of ammunition, like artillery shells. Don't worry too much about how to access these interfaces for the moment. Rather, it's only important to know that they exist and what they can be used for. If we spawn a shell in-game, it will create the explosion and damage associated with that ammo type. We can copy and paste the required information directly to our SQF file and use it to create an array of potential explosions. For the IED, it'll be appropriate to select a small range of shells. Then, we can use a function to determine which ammo type is selected from the array and spawned in the mission. This will allow us to randomize the size of the explosion. So, now we've ensured that both the location and the scale of the IED attack will be dynamic, simply by implementing a few commands. The challenge, of course, is in balancing the mission and dealing with the repercussions of different events occurring. Well, that brings us to the end of this tutorial. I hope you found it interesting and will be inspired to create your own dynamic missions in Armour 2 Operation Arrowhead.